God has given me permission to teach today. At the beginning of this year, God brought us to the deposit of the word of God about firstborn. Who can remember the mystery of the firstborn? The mystery of the firstborn. Easter came and took us into mystery of redemption. After Easter, we went into the mystery of the Holy Spirit. And from there, we ventured into the prayer warfare issues. And the Holy Spirit, and I had made a promise that we will take this firstborn mystery and run with it. And the Holy Spirit has been giving me <clears throat> reminders. And so this morning I had released to go back. And I want you to pay attention and do something for yourself. You have the collection of all the teachings on, the, on firstborn, the mystery of firstborn. We're going to linger there for some time. We're going to have revelation about the mystery of firstborn in Christ. And we will use it to solve practical problems in ancestry. Practical problems in lineage. Practical problems in personal lives. Regarding where you are born into your family. Regarding your life. Your, your place in society. Your place in history. Your place in the plan of God. It is very, very powerful. So I trust the Holy Spirit to completely facilitate this revelation. Or the revelation of this mystery. Mystery is the hidden revelation is the, the making known of the hidden. So where you have mystery, the next level you need to talk about is revelation of mystery. Mysteries are codes, coded information available only for those who have been initiated. Those who are initiated into the mystery. The word mystery from the Greek language is musturion. It is knowledge of the initiates. Knowledge available only to those who are initiated, those who have been initiated into a realm, into a club, into a school, into a place. But in this case, it is made, it is referring to revelation to knowledge made available to those who have been initiated into the life of God in Christ. Those who have been welcomed, you know, the issue of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and being baptized in water and the Holy Spirit is initiation. Initiation into divine into divine life, into divine household, into divine, divine, divine structure, into divine experience. Being, being, act, being begotten by the Father is being initiated into the hidden life, the mystery life of the Father, the mystical life of the Father. You can be born again. You can have that portion, that inheritance of being given a place in the life of the Father through the Son and the expression of the Holy Spirit. But without revelation, without revelation, you remain an, you remain a spiritual novice. You remain ignorant. You remain a neophyte. You remain somebody who is operating from afar. Paul writing to the, to the Ephesians, Paul writing to the visions, talk about that the Father will give you the give you revelation, the spirit of revelation and wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, the spirit of of revelation the spirit of revelation in the knowledge in the knowledge of god in the knowledge of god it takes revelation it takes revelation in the mystery for you for you to know that which god has given to you he prays that the god the father may give you may give you let's go to ephesians <coughs> excuse me let's read from verse 17 in his prayer, I said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, as opposed to religious spirit in the knowledge of God, that people know God in the categories of religion, that those who know God in the format 
in the format of religion and they are taught by men only. From what they are taught, they have no access beyond the words of men. They have no access beyond the understanding of men. That is what you see in religion, in church and in churches. People can make reference to the words of their doctrine. People make reference to the words of their teachers. But people have no revelation of the implication and the workings of those words. In that way, they cannot discern what is truth and what is falsehood, what is just mere external religiosity without power. And so Paul prayed for the saints. He said, I do not cease to give thanks in verse 16. I don't cease giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And I love this prayer. I will always bring this up. And my prayers, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. When you know him in wisdom and revelation, in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, that you may know. So after knowing God at a general level, when you come to the place of wisdom, revelation and wisdom in that knowledge, you come to the place of the eyes of your mind being enlightened. And at that level, you know again. You know again the healing implication of what you know in God. You know again the victory dimension of what you know in God. You know again the breakthrough dimension of what you know in God. The dominion dimension. So you know, every one of you sitting there, sitting here, you have knowledge of God. You have knowledge of God one way or another. Whatever is the level of that knowledge, whatever is the expression of that knowledge, there is something you know. But without the spirit of revelation and wisdom, it is just there without implication, without fruitfulness, without manifestation, without result. So the purpose of operating in the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation is this. Your, the eyes of your mind will be enlightened. At first, it is just your mind at the intellectual level that is enlightened. And you have access to information about your faith. And you can talk about your God as being triune, Father, Son, and the Spirit. You can have very good understanding of that and then quote scriptures. And quote scriptures about healing. But you don't have the spirit of revelation and wisdom in that knowledge of the word of God in healing that you are talking about. It is in the realm of that wisdom and revelation, the spirit, not just revelation, not just wisdom, but the spirit that brings wisdom. Wisdom. wisdom is practical application of information for good result. And the spirit of wisdom and um, revelation, revelation opens the door. It's <clears throat> the apocalypsus. It is the taking of veil of the reality. So the God, the reality of God. The, the, the glory of God that is veiled is as important in your life as God not being there at all because he's covered. But when the veil has been taken away in Revelation, suddenly something happens to you. The eyes of your mind are now enlightened and you come to know. So there is another level of knowing. And that is the realm. Rise to your feet. Let's make some confession. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not speaking. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Father of glory. Give me. Give to me. The spirit of wisdom. You, are not, you have not lifted your hands. Do that. Say, Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, the Father of glory, please give to me, mention your name, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, I may come to know what is the hope of my calling 
the hope of your calling upon my life the riches of your glory in the inheritance of your sins so lord open the eyes of my spirit the eyes of my understanding in order to know in order to know healing in order to know deliverance speak those words as it pertains to you in order to know victory in order to know your blessing in marriage in order to know your blessing in prosperity in order to know your blessing in dominion in order to know come and pray those prayers say lord enlighten the mind the, the eyes of my mind uh, by the spirits uh, of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you so that i may know in the name of jesus christ let me hear those your, let me hear your amen like fire amen. lift up your two hands as i speak you shall have access through the spirits of wisdom and revelation amen. and today the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened amen. and then you will know again you will know of the victory of God. You will know of the power of God. You will know of the wonder of God. You will know of the wealth of God. What else will you know of God? Mention it. What else will you know? 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 Go ahead and talk about it. Take ownership of it. I will know. I will know. Job says, I know. I know that my Redeemer, I am not told, I know. Having been told, you need to come to know. There is a knowledge at the level of being told. There is a knowledge at the level of reading. But there is a knowledge at the level of coming to know. With the spiritual eyes, the eyes of understanding, enlightened, made open. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by the grace of God, the scripture says, when you know, something happens when you know the truth something happens the truth sets you free from limitation that's not all the truth sets you free to enjoy abundance liberty works in two ways liberty from and liberty to so when the scripture says when you know the truth the truth shall set you free your mind is accustomed to seeing freedom only from the deliverance from something that hooks you down. That's not all. The spirit, when you are set free, freedom means you are now allowed to access. There is a freedom from, freedom from limitation. And there is a freedom to advance. Freedom, freedom to explore. Freedom to rise. Freedom, say, I come to know. And by the knowledge of God, through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, I am free from this. And I'm free into this. Free from limits into limitlessness. Free from darkness into light. Free from sickness into health. So speak what you are free from and what you are free to. I am free to enjoy the fullness of the deposit of divine life in Christ. I am free. I am free to live pure, holy, and righteous. I am free to live elevated and in dominion. I am free to live prosperous and mighty in the name of Jesus Christ be seated is that helping you these are prayers you must pray until you come to the place of having spiritual understanding you are not yet ready you are not yet ready in matters of prospering from the word of god you will still be an infant being tossed about by the wind of strange doctrines and the memorizing of the ideas and thoughts of men that are far from the revelation of the truth about God. Today, I want to start talking to you all over about the mystery of the firstborn and the purpose of this mystery of the firstborn is so that you may live intentionally because what makes the difference between a prince and just a common person in the neighborhood 
it's not that the prince is taller. It's not the prince. It's not that the prince is fairer. It's not that the prince is um, more intelligent. There is nothing at the physical level that distinguishes a prince, the one who is an heir to the throne, from any other person around. If you look at the throne of England, the father is sitting there and the son just parades himself around. He is bald headed like many Brits. Bald headed. And he just walks. He's not extraordinarily tall. Not extraordinarily handsome. I have not been told he's extraordinarily intelligent. The only thing about it is that when you meet him in the neighborhood, the way he comports himself and carries himself around tells you this man is different from this, the rest. I don't know. Am I communicating? That's the only difference between a prince and a common person in the neighborhood. It is in the courage, comportment, self-awareness. Sir, you walk according to how aware you are of who you are. One of the basic things, very basic things, we, I, we were taught as a young seminary, I don't know what that, whether that happens, we were taught in the seminary how to walk in Sutan. You were told in the seminary, you cannot wear Sutan and walk like a rascal, like you wear Sutan and, and walk like this. <laughs> you know, even if that is how you grow up, you come into the seminary, that is how you walk with decorum. You walk like a magic, like a royal. You walk and, you know, these things come from the European culture. History of the church reveals almost everything about Catholic priesthood and Catholicism in the sense of hierarchy is borrowed from the royalty and the aristocracy of Europe. Nothing more, including what bishops wear. Many people may not even know it, including many things that the bishops were, they were taken from the royal court, taken from the officials. I, too many things, too many things that are spiritualized, that, are, that, that don't have any spiritual culture, any spiritual character. It's just that they were imported from the place. So the priesthood was modeled to, on, to that pattern of royalty in the church level. And from there, the church moved on to ruling over the world, ruling over emperors. That they can, over, they can dethrone. They say, this emperor, go, go and do penance in a monastery and you cease to be an emperor. You cease to be a king. What well, it started with the priests modeling them like their lives so that you see how people you are taught. No, you cannot walk like a rascal. No, you cannot walk, you cannot talk like that. You cannot, you cannot. So many things that is the whole thing about the life of a prince. The problem as a child of God is that you don't know there is a dimension of life that is expected of you, a carriage of yourself in the neighborhood that makes everybody treat you differently. When, an, when, a, when a fool insults everybody and you come out, I say, again, for that, you don't go for dang bang. You, you get away. You are not involved in this. I don't want to bring you into this trouble. Such that because of how distinguished you are, even a fool recognizes you on the day of insult. He said, you are not part of this insult. Don't allow me to insult you. I'm sorry. Get inside. Don't come out. Why? Because of how you comport yourself. And the working of grace will flow to you according to your understanding revealed in your life. I don't know what I'm communicating. The working of grace, the working of grace will, 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 um, will manifest in your life according, according to your knowledge. Remember what the prayer we have prayed, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the Spirit of wisdom, wisdom in the life. You have the life of God. How do you apply this life of God to be different in business? Have a different result that looks like the result of God. Have a different result in marriage that somebody looks at your marriage. Say there is something godly about this marriage. There is something about this marriage that's so different positively and beautifully and refreshingly. So different from the other marriages that we know. All of this is because of the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom by which practically you know how to harness the life of God in your life in order to make a difference, in order to influence, to lead, to guide. Because the word of God says you are the light of the world. Shout hallelujah. 
So the purpose of the revelation of the mystery of the firstborn is so that you may come to the place of wisdom, place of revelation in the knowledge and understanding and application in practical terms and spiritual, spiritual operation of the implications of firstborn status on earth. That is how you have a different result. There's a dimension that after prayers, you must leave the prayer out in your life. If you have been asking God, give me husband, give me husband, give me husband, that's what you fast about. That is what you pray about. You must start living like a married person. Somebody ready to be married. You must start living the life of honor and dignity and respect. You must start looking like if someone has been looking for a wife, he has found you. And it's now, the surprise will be, oh, you are already married? Okay, you are not yet married, thank God. It is somebody like you that I've been looking for. You cannot look cheap and you cannot talk cheap. You cannot walk cheap. You cannot live cheap. Because what makes a wife different from others is that there is a price upon you. The price is not necessarily money. That there is another life that has possessed you and owned you and has elevated you from the common. From the general. You are no longer generally available as a girl, as a woman. You are specifically available. So in every place, you see whether you are Muslim or whatever, you see people wearing. It means I'm not general. I'm particular. I belong to a world that is marked by dignity. So in the workplace, there is etiquette about how you treat people's wife. In engagement, in anything. And somebody you talk in a particular, and somebody tells you, I am married. He tells you, behave accordingly. I don't know what I'm communicating. So you cannot be praying. You cannot be praying and then act opposite. You've been asking God to give you wealth and make you wealthy and you live like the greatest power on earth. You hate to give. You confess every day you are poor. You walk, the land, you walk around like a truck, a truck pusher. Lord, give me a job. Lord, give me a job. And you dress in sack dirty jeans and useless dirty shirt. And you say you have a degree, whatever. If somebody looks at you, there is nothing pointing the person to what it takes in your life for you to be in somebody's space. You look like you belong to the God that's scooping out sand. That means your prayer should condition you. After you have prayed, you leave. Am I communicating? After you have prayed, what do you do? You live the life of that prayer. Live in anticipation, in expectation that God will answer. Abraham used to be Abraham. And God said, from now you shall be Abraham. Abraham means the father. Abraham means exalted father. Abraham means the father of nations. So he was, a, and this man had not had any child. But God had spoken to him, you have a child. Which means he was living in expectation. And God told him, it's not, it's not enough for you alone to live in that expectation. Make that expectation external and communal. Make it social. Let people have that as a transactional connection with you. And so when people see you, they speak to you and they call you and address you. And remember, you are somebody who is already a father of nations to come. So your name shall no longer be Abraham. Your name shall be what? Abraham. So he told people, I am Abraham. And so when they call Abraham, it means there is a forging, there is a calling forth of nations. He had to walk like one. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will no longer contradict the word of God with your life. Lift up your two hands. Say, in the name of Jesus, I synchronize my life and my prayer. And they are one. My prayer is not different from my life. And my life is not different from my prayer. My expectation in God is the same thing as my life in God. I am not living lower than my expectation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Be seated. I don't know. Did that give you a revelation? Let's crack open again. 
the mystery of the firstborn. The church is the fellowship of the firstborn. This has been our foundation. Let's start from there so that we can move from that familiar place to some unfamiliar places. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22 to 24. And I asked the media all the messages we had already preached on and taught on this firstborn. You should put them together. I would like people to walk to the media and have, have them all com compiled for you in your, in, your, in your drive and your flash, your whatever it is, your phone, whatever. Just have and be listening to them throughout. He said, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Now, it could have been understood if you use the word the church of the firstborn, there is a way if it ended there, if the sentence ended at you have come to the church of the firstborn, it could be misunderstood to mean the church of Jesus Christ who is the firstborn. And in that case, you and I will be free from whatever that means because it's about Jesus Christ as firstborn. But the scriptures goes further to make it easy for us to understand because the purpose of God inspiring by the Holy Spirit, the writer of the letter to the Hebrews was to bring us this spirit of wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Knowledge of God which implies your status in God. Because the more you know God, the more you know who you are in God. The more you know God, the more you know where you are in God, how you are in God, what you have in God, and what you are capable of doing in God. You not knowing God means you don't know who you are in God. You don't know where you are in God. You don't know how you are in God. You don't know what you have in God. You don't know what you, what you can do in God. So the more knowledge of God for you, the greater your life. You are as big as your knowledge of God. You are as insignificant as your non-knowledge, no knowledge of God. And these are things that should worry you if you don't study. These are things that should worry you if you don't listen to the word of God intentionally to become. Taking notes and going home, praying with notes, speaking with a note. Making the note into practice so that it becomes habit. The life you live and your destiny. Say a, a, a thought will always give action, give birth to either a word or action, and if constant, consistently repeated, the action becomes um, habit, and the habit eventually becomes destiny, character, destiny, character from character becomes destiny, and your destiny will eventually define your destination. So habit is very important. It's not just that you receive the word of God as thought as word. Making it into what is repeated. You say, but what the scripture is saying in that verse 23 say to the general assembly and church of what? Of the firstborn. Read the next what follows. Come on, read it louder. Huh? Who are registered? Okay. So you can say who are. That means in this case, not talking about Jesus. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. Registered in heaven incorporated in heaven. Do you have your certificate of incorporation? That's the Holy Spirit. The scripture talks of the Holy Spirit as a seal. A seal. Wow. Okay, let's leave it there. So, the church is the assemblage of the firstborn. That means once you are called out, the word church is ecclesia. It's from ecclesia that we come to the old English and Germanic language. Kerko character that we now have church but it comes from ecclesia ecclesia ex, out of and kaleo called called out so the church is then those called out called out of banality generality and to the totality of the mass of humanity everybody just just humaning around 
womaning around and manning around, boying around, girling around, babying around. That's general. But those who have been called out by faith, who have heard the word of God and accepted the word of God and they are born of God, they have been called out. They are called out not into something that looks like where they are called from. They are called out into a new administration, into a new ecosystem, into a new admin, into a new economy totally, into a new life, a new household, a new company, a new society. The church is a new society. The church is a society in the society. Just as say, do you are in the world, but you are not of what? Of the world. So you are called out into a new lifestyle. You are called out into a new set of values. You are called out into a new character, into a new image, into a new brand. You are called out into a new kingdom. Until you are out, you are not in. And once you are out and you come in, out of darkness, out of sin, out of rebellion, out of every form of life that had characterized you and where you are coming from. Once you come in, you passing through the gates of faith means you are transformed into firstborn. Means as you meet others, you are meeting fellow firstborn. I don't am I am I communicating? Just shake somebody, stand up and shake somebody's hand. You say, Welcome, firstborn. Your welcome. God's first man say, welcome. Say, it's good to see you, God's first man. Say, it's good to see you, God's first man. Hallelujah. It's, it's okay. Is somebody lying calling you first man? That one is between you and God. Whether you have been called out, what are you out of and what are you into? What's the difference between you now and the you then? Until there is no, until there is a difference that is provable proven that this person now is different that now temptation becomes a propelling um, some kind of pressure to take you back to that place and you consistently say no because you have been brought into something that is when we can truly say oh welcome God's firstborn be seated and today is an opportunity for somebody to take a decision and be separated shout hallelujah I don't know whether the, is this revelation coming to you clearly? The Holy Spirit told me we're going to be teaching. We're going to be teaching and turning people into what God's vision is. Okay. So the church is the company, is the society of the firstborn. What I'm going to show to you are in the coming minutes, hours, and days, and weeks, and months, is that everything being called the church and those in the church should be the most powerful influence on earth. A child of God is expected to carry the greatest influence on earth. People have used the Bible to teach and show children of God as the weakest, as the most timid, as the most wretched. People have used the Bible to teach people to burn their devices, burn their TVs, and, and, and burn all their beautiful fanciful, fanciful clothes. Lack of knowledge is dangerous. And it is more so when this lack of knowledge is exhibited by somebody who leads others. Exodus, what is, what is this firstborn about? The firstborn thing is God's thing. God only has firstborn. God's own portion on earth. In heaven, we may not know completely God's portion. We know there are angels, there are archangels. We know there are four living creatures. We know there are, there are different structures and layers and hierarchy of spirit beings in heaven doing the bidding of God. We cannot fully know if they are just things we talk about in glimpses. But on earth, we know God's portion. On earth, it is important you know God's portion. If you don't know God's portion in heaven, it is excusable. I don't know. It has not been revealed completely. When we get there, we will be permitted and allowed to know. But God's portion on earth, Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let's see God's portion. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. 
Now, let's use that to understand the word of God in Hebrews talking about welcome to the church of firstborn. It means the church is where God has his portion. Everybody in the church is God's own portion. God's own inheritance. Do you know you are as powerful as, a, as your inheritance? You are. Inheritance is so powerful. Let's go back to the throne. The monarchy in England. Everything about the son waiting for the father to die. Like the father waited for the mother to die. Everything about that son is about the inheritance. He does not pray that the throne comes for him. He can only pray that he lives till the throne comes. Because certainly the throne will come. Except he abdicates. Except something happens to him that will disqualify him one way or another. So inheritance is not what you pray for. Inheritance, number one, is what you live and expect. And eventually it defines who you are. Your value in life is your inheritance. If your inheritance is just about your father, who had three plots of land, and three and two are under dispute, and only one is available, and your father died, you are all seven. And the one plot of land is available to be divided among seven people. That's how important you are. At the very basic level. Every other thing is what you now acquire for yourself. So at the very basic level, before you cough, before you sneeze, your value is your inheritance. Now you can grow beyond your inheritance in the sense of what you now accumulate for yourself, what you now acquire for yourself through intelligence, through ability, through productivity. You can expand beyond your inheritance. If the inheritance was small, but before you can acquire, before you have capacity to extend, before you have capacity to do anything, your worth is your what? Your inheritance. That is how children think. When I come into the compound, my children think my car is the best car. There are just some old used stuffs there. Broken here and broken there. And so I'm bringing my children back to school and they look at, oh, there is this other truck there and there is this other uh, little thing there and we are coming in this one. Say, oh, our, the cars are complete now. They are thinking in terms of what they own. The cars are complete. I'm about taking them to school and this one will say, I want to, daddy, drive us. We want to use the gray car. Yes, we want to use the blue car. So they are talking in terms of, they have not yet acquired anything, no productivity. Their value is about what you have inheritance now let's talk before you sneeze before you cough before you pray and if you are a child of God your value is who your father is and what he has before you pray before you sow seed before you are productive it is just your baseline am I communicating that's the power of inheritance now when we talk about inheritance, it's about portion. What belongs to you by right? What God is telling you is that on earth, I also have inheritance. God's inheritance, the scripture says the earth and its fullness thereof, they belongs to God, but God does not boast about Paris. He does not boast about Eiffel Tower there. He does not boast about uh, Washington DC. He does not boast about Abuja. God boasts about his own son. He said, behold my son, with whom I am what? Well pleased. What are you going to do? Listen to him if you want to prosper. That's what God boasts about. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Stand up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I enjoy the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I grow in the spirits of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. And at this point, the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened and I come to know again. I know I cannot fail. I know I cannot die young. I know I am not sick. What are you know? What do you know at this point? Just begin to speak. I know I will not fall apart. I know I will not see shame. 
I know that I will not see disgrace. I know that I'm not going to be disgraced in life because the eyes of my understanding have been enlightened and I have come to know the glory of my calling and the glory of God's inheritance among the saints. Glory. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Glory to God be seated. Let's go back to that verse 18. Let's talk about God's inheritance. In that verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 1, before we come back to Exodus. Say the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, of God's calling. And what are the riches of the glory of his word? His inheritance in the sins. This is subject to interpretation. There, is, there are two ways to this. The riches of the glory of the inheritance that the saints have in God. And also, the riches can be seen as the riches, the glory of the inheritance that God has in the saints. Come on, come on. Am I communicating? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you have never known that God has inheritance on earth, you know about your inheritance, what you took from your father. People take maybe cough that is never cured, incurable cough from their father. And that's their inheritance. It's called hereditary sickness, hereditary disease. Say, my father suffered, that my grandmother, my grandfather suffered, that we've listened to those stops. Some people have that as inheritance. What is your inheritance in God? That is, your inheritance in God is your being firstborn, is firstborn. And what's God's inheritance on earth? What's God's inheritance on earth? They are the firstborn. That Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whether they are firstborn of beasts or firstborn of human. That's why in Grace Family, we take first fruit seriously. The very first that comes to you. If you are beginning a business, the very first profit that comes to you. At the beginning of your business here, yeah? what you know, it, it can be something that is crazy, but it is something that makes you have divine ownership over you, such that whoever dares you, dares death, wants to die. You do who dares take over. What is what is the inheritance of God? His firstborn. He said, every firstborn, they are my portion. They belong to me. Your inheritance is what belongs to you by right. You don't, if you, if you pay for it, it is not your inheritance. It's your acquisition. If it flows to you just because of who you are as a son or a daughter, you didn't have to pay for it to come to you but it came to you just for the sake that you are somebody's daughter you are somebody's wife you are somebody's husband you are somebody's you are somebody's son in that's inheritance some people marry into wealth by marriage what belongs to the wife instantly comes to them that's inheritance after you're married to somebody who is wealthy, the wealth of that person is not what you have to ask for. It is your own. People marry a husband who is wealthy, royal, and they marry straight into royalty. They marry straight. If royalty becomes your inheritance. We've seen that in England. That somebody marries somebody and changes title. From a titleless person into somebody with title. That you being in the hospital is talked about the whole world. People want to know why did you go to the hospital? What happened to your photograph? And you have to come and explain because you are important. I don't know what I'm communicating. People are born into somebody's family. They may be short. They may be stupid, but it is their inheritance. They may not know how to use it. They may be foolish how they go about it, but it is just their own. It's just that it is a good thing belonging to a fool. They don't have to be wise in order to have it. Wisdom will help them to enjoy it. I don't know where I'm communicating. That's inheritance. 
So God also has his inheritance. And this is curious. And you have to pay attention to this because if God calls something his own, if something is my own, I say my own. I usually tell people around me, and I've told the first lady when we got married early, I say every beautiful thing belongs to me. So when I go to a place, I say beautiful, oh, that's mine. And I see somebody with a beautiful heart. I say, but that heart, even though it's female, it's the heart of female, if I wear a woman, I will take it from you because it's mine. And if you wear, all of you wear good shoes in this church, if you are beautiful like this one, it's mine. It doesn't mean that I will come and steal it or take it from you just to let you know it is mine. Just wear it. Why? Every beautiful thing is what? Mine. It's not my fault. It's my choice. It's just that it's not every beautiful thing that I will enjoy. So I let you have it. Keep your beautiful thing, but just know that it is mine. And it, that's just how I choose because I know I deserve beautiful things. And wherever they are found, they are mine. I oh, come praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I don't know. It's a, it's a way by which I live. So when, that's why I talk about people good things because it's mine. I take ownership of good things. If you do something very well, I told you I'm going to take photograph with the seller because they are mine. They sang very well. And they looked well. They did. They don't look well. We try to find out what happens. They don't look beautiful and sing well. We try to see a really fine ownership because if it's not beautiful, for Christ's sake, it's not mine. It's not mine. No oh, praise God. That's just how crazy my mind works. So the point is this. When they say this thing belongs to the king, it must be valuable. Do you know when people die years later, they do auctioning of what belongs to them? His anger chief. This anger chief was used in the 15th century by so so and so so and so so person, and it has survived till now. And it's going on, it's going on sale to be auctioned in so so and so so place. And they say at this point it is worth 150 million dollars. Somebody's anger chief, yes, because of whose anger chief, whose the anger chief is. If we have to do auction, how much will you go for? No, 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 no. Let's, oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Let's do this. Let's do. Who is the child of God here? Who is God's firstborn here? Who is God's firstborn here? I'm going to choose from among the firstborn to ask a question. Um, praise God. Praise God. Okay. You are the one who raised your hand. I didn't tell you to raise your hand. Bring microphone. Praise God. Praise God. Come this way. Come this way. It is okay to show the face of God's firstborn in this place. Praise God. This is what we do. Praise God. This is what we do. Come on, come on. I like your black. It's not mine. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Praise God. Okay. Is it on? So, that's how we do it. <laughs> okay. So, okay. You are taking the microphone like God's firstborn. Be confident and bold. Of course you are. And bring it closer to your mouth because you deserve it. Okay. Now, if we are to do auctioning of you, uh, auction you out, and somebody is to say, okay, this is God's firstborn, and we want to, pl want to place a price upon this firstborn. How much do you think you should go for? I'll go for a value that is um, limitless. Uh, that's, no, no, to specify the limitless. No, no. Just put a word, and um, like, how much? Ten thousand billion dollars. <laughs> Ten thousand billion dollars. Praise God. That's a very expensive of first part of God. Praise God. Can you celebrate her? Take microphone from her. Let's go to this side. Let's go to this side. <laughs> I'm just who on this side. Who are God's firstborn? And all? What's the issue? Don't waste my time. Next service should begin. What is, who is God's firstborn? Uh, people are becoming careful. I don't understand. I didn't do anything. We celebrated. I just want this side. Do you want me to go back to the other side? Okay, so who is God's firstborn on this side? I know many. Who wants me to ask this question? If you want me to ask you this question, can I see your hand? Okay, I just I can just choose anybody. Okay, then somebody has volunteered. Hello, sir. We have two people who have volunteered. Okay, so you are God's firstborn, right? Oh, praise God. Give him microphone. I love your wives. They are mine. <laughs> okay. So, 
If you are to do auctioning of your auction, you out and you belong to God, God's firstborn, because God says every firstborn is mine or is his. And so how much do you think, how much value is on your head that you feel people should pay or somebody should pay in order to acquire you? Use the microphone well as God's firstborn. Go straight to the point. It's going to be a trillion of the world. A trillion of, of the, the world. world. I, I love it. A trillion of the world. Could be a trillion naira. Could be a trillion, trillion Ghana cities of the world. Of the word of God. Of the world. It's okay. Can I so? All right. The last person there. The last person there. And then um, God's firstborn. Yeah. I'm actually priceless, but just to put a figure, it would be a quintillion dollar. Okay, people, uh, 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 you are saying you should speak louder. Okay. I use, said use. I'm actually priceless as God's firstborn. Okay. But just to put a figure to it, I'll say I'm worth a quintillion dollar. A trillion dollars. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at John's Gospel chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. Praise God. Praise God. John's, John's Gospel chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave. He gave them the right to become what? Children of God. Every child of God who is firstborn is firstborn in Christ. So the right by which Jesus is the son of God in the order of the firstborn is the same right that every believer has. That means the worth of every believer is Jesus. That is why, that is the only reason he shed his blood. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood according to the scripture. And that is true. That means the value of somebody is in the blood. So when Jesus gave his blood, he did exchange. He took your place and you took his place. So every child of God is saved from darkness into Christ. The value of every child of God is Christ. So the price that somebody will pay for if the firstborn of God Whoever is the firstborn of God is sitting in this church. That price is Jesus. Anything less than Jesus cannot buy a son of God, a child of God. This is what you have to. The problem we have is that we think of worth in terms of money. God is thinking of worth in terms of Himself. The price that the prince of a nation has to has to pay or you have to pay in order to acquire that prince is the throne. Because the prince is worth the throne. That is what belongs to him. And in order to take him away, you have to give him equivalence of that throne. So in a normal situation, it's an abomination to marry somebody from the throne into a kitchen. Marry somebody from the throne place of rulership. And the marriage brings the person to, to a booker. It means you have taken the person from the words and given a different words. So every royal is only married to another royal. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. To take, except the royal is taking somebody from lower and bringing up. But you don't take a royal from a higher to where? Lower. It doesn't work that way. No matter how useless you are, once you come into Christ, your value is lifted. But nobody can take you down to anything lower. If you accept that, it's an abomination in heaven, which is what many children of God do. If you have ever done assignment and they say you should bring a good, you give a price for your, your worth, your value as a good. So many people sit at the end. They are goats of 100,000, 90,000. As at the time they bought the goat, it was 30,000. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some not even up to goats. Fanta. 
X. Garden X. Biscuit. To do exchange, say, to use to settle so that they will leave you alone. It means from the day that is used so that you can be free, your value is defined as Fanta, as biscuit. That's how much was given for your redemption from the trouble you went through. That's how what happened. Every time you go to a place of assignment, you say, bring this, bring this, bring this, bring this, and you give. Spiritually, that's the identity and the value you carry. Say, how much did it cost for us no longer to attack him? They don't mind them. They brought one sick goat. We rejected. They went and brought another one. So that woman you see so is a goat. One sick goat that was rejected and one other healthy goat that was killed. <laughs> this is a mystery. Will you want to rise again? Say, in the name of Jesus, rise again. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I receive the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you. And the eyes of my understanding are enlightened. And I now know what is the hope of my calling. The things I expect from this calling. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. What are the things you expect from this calling? What are the things you expect from your calling as a child of God? Oh, people are not praying. Speak it out. This is talking. I expect divine health from my calling. I expect worth of inestimable value from this calling. I expect dominion. Dominion of divine character. I expect rulership. The boundary lines have fallen onto me in mighty pleasurable places. The rod of my strength has been extended to me from Zion. I am ruling in the midst of my foes. These are things I expect from this God. That by stripes I have been healed forever and ever. That I am first and not last. I am head not tail. I am ahead, not behind. I am honored and blessed. I am pure and sanctified. I am holy and righteous. These are expectations. These are my hopes. When you talk about hope, you are talking about beautiful expectation. What is the hope of his calling? The hope is that I shall see him face to face eventually I and not another I shall see him on the last day as he is but even now we are children of God for what manner of love the father has lavished upon me that I am called God's own what manner of love the father has lavished upon me I am called God's own I am called his beloved I am called God's firstborn that is who I am now the world does not know me now and that's not a problem because the world did not know him then as he was as he is so I am here if they don't know me it's because they did not know him that is who I am for now but that is not all I know also that I shall see him face to face I don't know what are you expecting the hope of this calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints are you expecting glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ glory to God be seated is this making sense God says I should come and set you free by knowledge this is what you know that makes you think above limit. That makes you think above wishes and wisdom. That makes you think above witchcraft. It is an insult to be invited to join any cult or occult group. Having known this, Freemans plus, Oboni plus, 
plus resecution and plus all the useless things that people belong to and they raise their shoulder and walk about like they are. They are not. It's an insult of the highest order to even suggest to a child of God that you can be initiated into that because you have been initiated into divinity. That is the cult of your initiation. You have been brought forth for as many that received him, even those who believed in him, he gave them right. When you belong to a court, initiation gives you right to benefit from all that the court provides. But when you know God, the son gives you right to enjoy in the father what he himself enjoys. To live in the father how he himself lives. To do in the father what he himself does. That is why I say you will do everything that I do. But that's not all. You will do greater things. It is by that same right. Those who are to do greater things, they will not do greater things because they are ordained. They will not do greater things because they are designated apostles. They will not do greater things because they have been made bishops. That is the nonsense of ecclesiastical madness of thinking you need a title in order to operate in power. It is a matter of rights. If you understand this, you raise your dead child without calling a pastor. If you understand that, you stop your husband from dying young. If you understand this, you, you command open the womb of your wife. If you understand this, you speak to cancer and it dies. If you understand this, you command a bat of hell and they fall back to the abyss. Why? The same right by which Jesus said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion for we are many here. And he said, please do not send us. I'll send us to those pigs. They beg for help. And he said, go. And they went. It's the same right that things troubling your children. When they come back from school, they begin to behave strangely. And you look at it in the eyes. I say, go. and never come back. And that's all. Why? The right. Say right. Jesus is son by right, not by fight. He said, it pleased the father that the fullness of divinity will dwell in him. It pleased the father. He did not fight for it. It is the right of sonship. That is the right that is given to you. So it's an insult of the highest grade that you now have to belong to anything for any reason at all or there is a suggestion of any kind it's because you don't know who you are and you are not willing to live the life that you live the life that belongs to you I came to introduce to you the mystery of the firstborn and this is what we'll be doing and, and you, you speak and dead things will come back to life and you speak and demons will vanish from your sight why? You know who you are. You know who you are. In the coming weeks, we'll begin to explore the, the portion of the firstborn, the dimensions of the portion of the firstborn. But today, I just want you to understand that God's portion on earth is the firstborn. Sir, things look like they are on us. When things don't look like they are on us, there is a question mark. If you drive a car and it's better than you, then we have to find out, how did you get this car? You stole it, right? He said, I bought it at Plaza. Plaza is where 200,000 naira worth of phone is sold for 20,000. He said, give it to me. <laughs> and report yourself to the station tomorrow. <laughs> oh, praise God. Are things that you carry say, but this is this is not befitting of you. That's how you look. That's that's where you are found and how you are found. And somebody says, So I'm so surprised. This is this is not befitting of you. This is less than of but there is how you see somebody say, I, I always knew, <laughs> but I, I always knew this is where you belong. I know you have been hiring, <laughs> I know it's just humility, you've been playing low, but this is where you belong. Sir, that's where you belong. That's where you belong. That's where you belong. 
So when the scripture said, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying in Exodus chapter 13, verse one to, verses 1 and 2, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, consecrate to me all the firstborn. All this consecrate means separate them from the rest. So it's already telling you about the making of the firstborn. So when we begin to talk about how are firstborns made, consecration. You are born into a family of ten, but you are separated from the other nine. You are born into a neighborhood of uselessness, but you are separated from them. Do you are in the world? You are not of the world. You are separated. You say you are sanctified by the truth. By the truth, you are separated. You are made different. You are shaped differently. You are sculpted differently. This is the price that many people are not willing to pay. Most Christians, they just prefer to be like every other, every other person. God is saying, consecrate to me all first ones. Set them aside. Don't put them among others. Bring them out. So when I come with the word of truth, it's by this truth that God separates. As you hear this word, you wake up and realize you came with somebody that you slept with last night on the bed of fornication and you just sit down and look, this is, this is, this is and somebody said, okay, let's end here. Thank you so very much. You brought me to this place. Now we are done. God bless you. That's our separation. That's what consecration is about. It changes everything. There's a place you walk out, you make money. After you hear this, say, this is, this is not becoming of me. This is, this is, this is not it. And I'm done. And I'm not thinking about it. And I am already done. That is what consecration is. Let's look at Exodus chapter 22 and verse 29. Let's look at Exodus chapter 22 and verse 29. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe produce and your juice. Now, God is talking about the first. Next week, I will tell you about the character. We have talked about this before. The character and the marks. When we use the word character, they come from the Greek word that suggests of mark. Imprint, like a mark. Like when you stamp something, it has a mark. That's character. So character is what marks you out from others. That's what we're talking about characteristics. The properties that sting, distinguish one. The marks that make one different from others. So next week we shall look at the characters of the firstborn. So why is God interested in the first? Why does God demand of first? It's because of what first represents. He says, I am the first, I am the last. Because he's the first, the first belongs to him. Come on. Say, come on. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You shall not delay. So even as you hear today, you shall not delay to accept the consecration and the separation of the first brother. He said, you shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe produce and your juices. The firstborn of your sons, you shall give to me. You shall, it's a gift. Say, I'm a gift. Once you are born again, you are a gift from humanity to God. You are a possession. Your parents may have been witches and wizards, may have been anything. The day you are born of God, you are now a gift. And gifts are kept in special places for people. Depending on how valuable, they are kept in vaults, in treasuries. Rise to your feet. Are you going to delay? Lift up your two hands. <laughs> oh Lord, my God. When I'm in awesome wonder. Consider. Halaboshe. The works the hands have made. I see I hear the rolling thunder Thy path through The universe display Oh Lord my God 
Oh Lord my when I'm in awesome wonder Alamusiketi consider the words the hands of me I see the stars I see the star I hear the rolling thunder thy power thy power throughout the you give us verse 2 stands up to Halabosha Katin and when I think of God, His Son, not sparing, sent Him to die. I scarce can take it. Kalaboshi anda, kalabori anda, died on the cross. Nanaya anda, my bed. Gladly buried, he bled, he bled, and died to take away my sin. If there is three, give us the three. Halaboshi and Ata, when Christ shall come, we shall. Then sings my soul. You can't say how great thou art. You can't sing how great thou art. And sings my soul. And sings my soul. My Savior, Sing how great thou art. Sing it loud and let your voice be heard, my soul. God is. Tell me how great his works. That is the song of my soul. So boys, my soul.
God talks about not being, not delaying. Do you want to delay your consecration? Whatever you are, just stretch forth your hand. And you're going to speak personally. If you are a child of God in this place, God is calling for higher consecration. You can never reach the highest point of your consecration. The scripture says, we behold him with unveiled face and we are being changed. We have been changed. And we are changed from glory to glory. So there is always a glory after glory. The path of the righteous shines brighter. But there is always brighter than brighter. So as a child of God in this place, yield yourself to higher consecrations. Say, Lord, by your spirit, bring me to the place of awareness of new separation. And if you are in this place and you don't have the witness of salvation in your soul, you don't have peace with God, you are not so sure of what happens to you, should you be called home now? Should death knock at your door now? Where will you spend eternity do you have peace and witness of the spirit inside of you? And if you are in that place, right now, you're going to open your mouth and just ask Jesus to forgive you. He's the one who gives right. You don't need to fast. You just need to speak. You don't need to pay. You just need to speak. Just confess your sin. Repent and confess your sin. Repentance means Turn away from your ways. Turn your heart from your former ways. And turn your heart to the Savior. Call his name Jesus. Speak in the word. Say, I turn from sin. Confess those sins. Say, from today I let them go. Take them from me. Take this from me. Take this from me. Take rebellion from me. Take the nature of sin from me. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my right to firstborn status in the Father. Say, I accept you as my right. The same right by which you are the Father's son, you give. I receive that right. That right is justification. By you, Jesus, I'm justified. It's a gift. That right is righteousness. I am made right. I receive the right of righteousness. That right is wholeness. Being made whole. I receive you, Jesus, as my right. Into my life, you are my wholeness. That right is healing. It is the right of children to be healed. It is children's bread. It is their right. Just guys said it belongs to children. It is their right. Say, it is my right in Christ to be healed. I accept you, Jesus, as my right to wholeness, right to healing, right to be pure and clean from sin, right to be free from the works of Satan. 
and begin to declare I am free from today from sin by the right that you give begin to speak those words personally speak personally as you speak there's going to be witness in the spirit as you speak the spirit of the father is coming upon you fresh the Holy Ghost is the right the Holy Ghost is the right of the son so because we are sons he sent us the spirit of his son the spirit that cries out Abba father just because we are children he sends us the spirit of his son so the spirit that comes into us is not the spirit of slavery it's not the, the spirit of fear it's not the spirit of guilt place your right hand on your forehead say I receive the spirit of the son the spirit of sonship I receive the character and the nature of the son I receive the ability of the son I receive the anointing of the son I receive the max of the son from today I begin to operate a son begin to speak speak out say from today I begin to operate a son I do what the son does I am who the son is I have what the son has I have the right of the son the right to call God my father say the father's throne is my portion the father's kingdom is my inheritance say I seek first my father's kingdom and the right conduct the righteousness of his kingdom wealth they come to me blessings they follow me favor they follow me begin to speak blessing over your life say I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place as you speak healing is taking place I command disease, sickness, infirmity. In the name of Jesus, get out of the body of this one who is consecrated. Every child of God here, everyone in this place, at this point you can lay your hand where you need the healing of God. You can lay your hand where you need the healing of God. Lay your hand where there is sickness. I command sickness. I command sickness to leave your body. 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 Lay your hand wherever it is in the name of Jesus. I command sickness to leave your body. Command sickness to leave your body. In the name of Jesus. I command favor to come to you. Sickness has left you. Wherever you lay your hand, sickness has left you. Some foul spirit, the spirit of addiction, they have left you. Immoral spirit, I command immoral spirit. Live in the name of Jesus. Command the spirit of epilepsy, the spirit of bedwetting. Somebody who is an adult suddenly began to bedwet. I command it. Go in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, whatever is autism in your child, I correct autism. I correct their artistic condition in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we love you. We bless you. Can you just wave those hands and, uh, and just bless the Lord? Just wave those hands and just bless. Then sings my soul. Halabosha. My soul. Just sing it like God is saying. Halabosha. How great are you? Malabosi and Alabrilikat. But sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior God. How great thou art. How great thou art. Father, we thank you. Just clap those hands like God is. 
or fear or despair. Hallelujah. Be seated. You know, from today, you have to consecrate your time. There is no consecrated life without a consecrated time. A time that is special for you to sit with the Lord, talk to the Lord, hear from the Lord. A study time. You start a Bible study plan. These days of smartphone, download, download your Bible app. There are different study plans there. And start daily study and meditation on the scripture. Study around sonship. By the grace of God, revelation is coming to you in weeks to come. Have a special time that you pray. Have a day that you set aside for retreat. Some weekends that you don't have anything doing. Just create two, three, four, five, six hours to just stay with the Lord. If you want to double charge your, your growth in God. If you want to accelerate and escalate your growth. You have periodic retreat times you set a longer block out a time for longer study and prayer and reflection sanctification will be would have speed and you begin to hear clearly from God and see clearly I'm excited and I'm so honored to have this opportunity to facilitate God's plan for you I see great days ahead wealth and royalty breaking forth in the name of Jesus Christ of course the prayer belt this week um, you show the prayer belts first before the offering for those who came late. In the prayer belts in this family, what we do is that we have a covenant time that we pray as a family. You, can, you pray for other time personally, but between the hours of 12 midnight to 4 a.m., even if it's 30 minutes, one hour, that any of the time that is convenient from 12 midnight to 4 a.m., you join, it becomes a family prayer house where people are in different places praying for you and we are praying for others. For this week, these are the, the things we are praying about. We are declaring that the gates of our overflow rest will no longer be shut. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1. So you speak your rest, that the gates of your rest have been opened in finance, in your health, in any area, that it will no longer be shut. And we are talking about Psalm 107 and verse 16, that the hand of your God has broken in pieces every satanic obstacle. So we are dealing with obstacles against the overflowing life. And you use that scripture and command things to be broken, or obstacles to be broken. And because the Lord has opened the gates of your rest, then you can begin to command wealth of the nations to come. Command promotion in the place of work. Command new jobs to come. If you are a business person, command new business opportunities and prospects. and op just, just command. Command. You know that God, you are God's portion. And God is your portion. And there is no limit to who you are and what you have. Because your true value is Christ. Everything that belongs to Christ on earth is your own. That is the wonder of sonship and the firstborn status. That's it for prayer uh, belts. So if you have not been involved... Get involved, get involved. So this consecration is practical because God says consecrate, set apart for me. So you need to begin to have a set apart life. There is consecration in finance too. Your tithe is your consecration unto God. Your seed is consecration, financial consecration. By your tithe, you show that your money is not normal like others. By your seed, by your offering, by your first fruit, by your partnership, you are saying... I belong to God. My finance belongs to God. God is the stakeholder, the first over my finance. And can I tell you something? When God goes ahead of you first, it means the battles are taken care of before you arrive. That's what tithe does. That God is first. That's what first fruit does. That's what seed does. That's what your offering does. It places God first in your finance. That means whatever comes against your finance does not see you first. It sees God and God settles it. That's why I say, I will rebuke devourers from your stock. God will rebuke devourer if he's ahead. So tithe, seed, offering, first fruit, whatever you do in the administration of honoring God with your resources, they just do one thing. They place God as supreme in your life financially, as first in your life financially. He goes ahead of you and he rebukes what comes again. He rebukes diseases and sickness. So as you give offering according to the kind that is, is, is app, app, um, applied to you right now, all envelopes are being given to you. You can get them, get the envelopes if you are already done and the account details on the screen, you rise to your feet. We're going to speak God going ahead. We're going to speak God being ahead and God changing things ahead. Rise to your feet, say in the name of Jesus. I shout, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I give to you as honor. 
as consecration, as worship. By my giving, I place you first over my finance, in my tithe, in my offering, in my seed, in my thanksgiving, in my partnership for the gospel. I place you first. Say, go ahead of me this week. Fight my battles financially. Rebuke the devourer. Rebuke sickness for my sake. And let the gates of wealth be open for me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I call in my resources. I call in my abundance. I call in my overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Be seated.